camera so that yeah yeah, yeah 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 please how long this would go um like one one hour is the event sir but uh, suppose if the students many students are not joining in huh. then we can end the session sir if the questions huh. are not coming in huh. we can end the session sir okay Now, yeah, just a second. Thing. We'll just check the audio alone. Uh, whether question ten of assignment one, that type of things. How? Are yeah, you, are actually, you? here uh, there is an another window where yeah. you can see whatever questions they are asking about, sir. If you want to skip, you can skip, or if you want to answer, you can answer, sir. Uh, yeah, but that oh, question. Just a second. We'll just yes, check the audio. Audio is fine, sir. There will be a delay of 15 20 seconds, sir. Okay, that's fine. But it's okay. no, what I'm telling is that can my students also see such questions? Uh, yes, sir. If they log in through that uh, this YouTube channel, YouTube event, no, you can see the event. Hmm. Yeah, and then if you want to write something, you can write, sir. How do I write? Uh, there is a this thing now, sir. You can use this thing and write, sir. And at the time alone, you just call me so that I will skip the switch the camera views so i can either uh, answer them uh, or i can write yeah you can write also sir mm. so at the time we need to switch the camera so that they can see this screen mm. so you have to press the transition sir. Mm. so i am here only sir so you, you please be here yeah, yes huh? sir, yes sir. first time so it will sure, be sir, sure sir so you can introduce and uh, mm. start uh, the session yeah. screen. Even if you put our course new, it will come. The time will be This one, this third, third link. Yeah. And then the questions will appear. Or you already muted, otherwise, echo will go. Yes, sir. We are live now, sir. You can okay. go ahead, sir. Okay. Hello, students. You can, uh, you know, ask your questions. I am here. Okay. Uh, I can, uh, first of all, give you some of the things that you have already asked me. Okay. Uh, so, you just listen to that and then you start your question. Your first question was that uh, what type of question comes in final exam? Fill in the blanks or MCQ? My answer is that uh, it is both. Okay. You will get both MCQ as well as fill in the blanks. Secondly, your uh, another question was that numerical problems are difficult and, and you got some less marks in assignment and you wanted to know that what you can do. Well, uh, you know, the numerical problems are difficult, but they are not very difficult. What you can do is that you can practice similar problems and uh, after practicing such problems, you can also go through the textbooks, reference books that I have suggested in the course. So you can practice from those textbooks also. And after practicing them, uh, if you get any problem anywhere, you let me know, okay? Uh, because that practice is anyway important. And uh, one last question you have given that, final exam pattern, number of questions or points, marks of each question, uh, so these three things, you know, these are, uh, there are certain element of surprise that are to be there. I cannot tell you everything about the final exam pattern, but I can tell you that the exam will be a mix of a multiple choice and fill in the blanks uh, and uh, some problems you may have to solve, but very simple numerical problems. Total number of questions will be just sufficient for the duration of the course, okay? Uh, not more than details I can give you before the exam itself. So, if, you know, you can, uh, oh, the question is designed in such a manner that you will be able to finish it up within the duration of the course itself. Okay, so these were your uh, basic questions and now you can ask me any new question. I am ready to get your chat.
here regarding the question of the coupling factor uh, you have given possibly none of the options but please look into it very carefully okay I will not give you the answer right now the only thing I will tell you here is that uh, what is the coupling factor it is essentially the ratio between the electrical or uh, you know mag electromagnetic energy to the mechanical energy that is there in the system so that is what is the coupling factor now you have to look into it carefully that how this energy ratio is getting reflected in the two terms in the numerator and in the denominator Sharad Kumar what is the best acoustic and thermal insulating cementitious material now when you say acoustic that means we will assume that you want very low damping so one of the best acoustic material is brass in this direction but you have also said that thermally insulating material so in that sense brass will not be good material for that and uh, there are other thermal insulating materials which are mostly uh, ceramic materials in nature okay so uh, certain ceramic materials at high temperature are they are also good in terms of acoustic properties okay let me give you a very simple example for example if you consider these uh, uh, simple uh, you know water carrier pitchers okay they are thermally insulating but they are acoustic as well now the, we have uh, there is a recent discovery we have done uh, uh, with uh, along with the uh, people from metallurgical science and that is uh, making a special type of uh, ferromagnetic uh, ceramic material this ceramic material when you burn it at a high temperature it actually becomes a good thermally insulating porous material as well as it has a very good acoustic property so these materials are of research mostly and uh, you will not find such materials uh, directly available in nature. Uh, yeah, Himangshu, you have also asked about the factor of safety. The factor of safety is always related to that whatever is the design strength and whatever is the actual load that is coming into the system okay so uh, and that uh, you know in terms of smart materials uh, you may consider it also in terms of uh, the designed say for example uh, the strength or say design uh, other properties let's say if it is damping and the actual uh, you know uh, system properties that is uh, that it is actually facing during the actual application you can consider it in terms of frequency also that design frequency versus actual excitation frequency
you so much. Would you like to discuss any other thing related to our subject since there are no questions? Um, yeah, no, there is. Yeah, Sharad, your question is on research going on about the nervous system in advanced smart materials. Uh, <laughs> Now, interestingly, we have just one of the research scholars who is here and he is working on such nervous systems, okay. Uh, so, they look for, uh, you know, updates in our web page. Yes, there are works going on uh, in advanced smart materials which uh, can actually control the impulse, the nerve impulse, the flow of nerve impulse and uh, I think uh, this uh, one of the papers uh, towards this direction based on the Kuramato oscillator model you will see in uh, this December. So once uh, we actually send the paper we will also send the reference to all of you. You can go through that paper and also many such research are there in the pipeline. Yeah, Hemangshu, your question was that material factor of safety is high uh, if high and if low, what does it mean? Material factor of safety, that itself is a little bit ambiguous. I think we can think of in terms of material damping factor, if that's what you want to mean, or the strength uh, factor of safety related to the strength of a material. And as I told you that related to the strength of a material, it is simply the ratio of the design strength and the load that is coming into the material and in terms of material damping factor uh, there actually it is related to the damping ratio that is uh, the actual damping versus the critical damping ratio and uh, that is one of the thing and also you can think of it in terms of uh, material loss factor okay which is the ratio of the um, loss modulus uh, to the uh, real modulus of the uh, material. Yes, yes, Vivek, D13 and D31 would be the same unless otherwise mentioned. Both of them refer to a similar type of coupling. D31 refers to that voltage is applied along three direction and deformation is happening along one direction. Whereas D13 is uh, related to that voltage is applied along one direction and deformation along three direction. But please remember D33 and D31 are not the same. There is a huge difference between the two. So one thing, let me ask you to the students that, uh, you know, if you look at the entire course, uh, can you tell me that what part of the course is uh, the most interesting part for you? Well, some of you are telling piezo and SMA. Is there any other point that you want to say?
self filling yeah that is also a very uh, interesting and a hot topic self filling it is just coming up in fact uh, not much of uh, practical applications have started so far but self filling smart material is just coming up <coughs> How about the energy harvesting section? Currently, we are doing lot of energy harvesting related works based on smart material, and uh, you would see in our web page that yeah, exactly yeah, vortex induced vibration yeah. So if you you will see that in our web page, we actually report this type of things. So uh, that is one of the very upcoming field of application of smart materials. There is also another thing that I have not discussed in the course that is uh, related to the smart materials uh, application of smart materials in terms of meta materials or meta structures. You can generate actually uh, by using this material you can generate negative portions ratio. there is a spark project going on in iit kanpur and in this project uh, you know uh, we are actually right now working on the applications of such systems yeah self foldable structures as yashashi is uh, mentioning is also very important particularly origami based uh, structures and uh, that uh, you know uh, these are having two different types of applications one application is in terms of uh, uh, what you call um, these uh, inflated structures or deployable structures so it has a lot of space applications and the other group is in terms of micro robotics Regarding the final exam, I want to give you one clue. Go through the lectures really point by point, okay? The, all the slides, because that is very, very important. Each and every slide, if you go through it, I think you will be able to answer more than 60% of the questions. I hope other than the lecture, uh, audio and video you can also ha uh, have the slides the slides of the lecture should be available with you uh, are we sharing sir okay in that case it will be available yeah there is one question that how can we make any structure from piezo powder and what would be the expected behavior in such a case now, uh, piezo powders, uh, you know, can be actually used in terms of making piezoelectric composites. And uh, the behavior of these type of systems are extremely complex. Uh, in simple cases, you can use the rule of mix for the, you know, behavior of such a system. But otherwise, you have to go through a, a complex mathematical expressions called HLV's inclusion technique, and then you have to actually model, uh, go through a multi-scale modeling. You have to first model this as an inclusion problem of piezoelectric material in an elastic substrate, and then you have to expand that model. You will see that this work uh, has been done with a nano composite material uh, by. Uh, um, myself and Professor Sumit Basu and one of my students that is actually reported in Journal of Sound and Vibration. Next section we will see that uh, you know how we can arrange it. Yeah, basically these kind of timings are fixed uh, uh, based on my availability because we are going through a regular teaching session here. But uh, I will see, I will definitely try to put it in Saturdays uh, um, or say any other day after 5.30. That is a good suggestion, I will try to uh, yeah, consider that.
Yes, there is a question on hybrid sensors and delamination sensors with the help of different active materials. Now, uh, we are teaching about these uh, so called, you know, uh, repairing uh, what you call self filling materials. Uh, they are actually, there is a section where I discuss that how you can use the delamination sensing. Okay. So, basically, these uh, delamination sensing can be done with the help of say magnetostrictive material very well because is the, if there is delamination there will be a change of stress and that will create a change of magnetic field okay so that is one approach and uh, we had <coughs> already i had discussed actually that how you can sense the delamination in this manner uh, in some of the lecture slides and uh, the same way you can also do such sensing uh, with the help of uh, other type of sensing in this case the cell filling system, it is based on an electroactive polymer that you would be able to uh, sense the delamination. And uh, in terms of the hybrid sensors, uh, the question is not clear to me. Is it that you are referring to material based hybrid sensing or you are referring to two different piezoelectric materials uh, worked, uh, you know, working as a hybrid sensor? Yeah, so if we consider material based hybrid sensors, so that would mean that, you know, if we apply uh, a kind of a, you say for example, piezoelectric material and some kind of a polymer, combination of the two, that can create a hybrid sensing system. The advantage of such a hybrid sensing system is that you can give a compliant shape to it. So for example, you can make a composite of uh, PVDF and that can be used as hybrid sensing system. On the other hand, there is actually other applications which I discussed during the course that you can develop a hybrid system where you have two different smart materials, let's say a piezoelectric material and a shape memory alloy system or a piezoelectric material and magnetostrictive material, the combination of them. Generally, this kind of system, so when you use two such different smart materials, we use them as actuators, but one can use them for sensing as well.
no i cannot explain nano diamond quantum sensors i think that is quite outside the purview of this particular course okay and uh, also you know quantum sensors or quantum bits or quantum dots they they are totally see the course was uh, kept intentionally in the newtonian domain okay we have not crossed that domain and uh, for quantum dots or uh, any such sensors we will need a basic uh, course on quantum mechanics first so that's why uh, you know this is beyond the uh, uh, scope of this particular course Well, it's a good question. The magnetostrictive delay line sensor, 
uh, this uh, also I think I have covered in one of the talks but uh, essentially this needs uh, magnetostrictive materials in terms of uh, an actuator which will generate a wave uh, particularly say for example you can consider a pipe like structure so in one side of it you can generate a wave uh, a structural wave okay it can be Rayleigh wave for example and then this wave you are generating with the help of uh, let us say magnetostrictive actuator and this wave is propagating through the pipe like medium. Now after some finite distance you put another set of magnetostrictive material. So what will happen is that this wave as it will be traveling through the pipe let us say if it is a healthy pipe then the wave will be reaching at a particular speed to the destination where you are receiving this wave and at that location if you if you have the magnetostrictive material attached to the system as the wave will pass you will get a change of stress in the magnetostrictive material which will create a change of magnetization and hence you will receive a signal there which will actually indicate the receiving of the stress wave and uh, the moment you are actually generating the actuation you can send the same wave uh, to the receiving position directly as an electromagnetic wave. So you are having then two uh, signals with you. One signal has passed through the solid and the other signal has passed as an electromagnetic wave. Now as you know the wave speed of an electromagnetic wave is very very high. It is close to the speed of light. On the other hand the wave that will be passed through the pipe that will be much slower. So there will be a delay between the two. This delay is also a function of the path that this wave that is propagating through the solid it is a function of the nature of the path. Let us say if there is a crack in the pipe then the stress wave will not be able to uh, pass through the pipe at the same speed as it would be if it is not cracked and hence if you actually measure the delay and if you continuously monitor the delay you will be able to say that between the position of transduction where you have generated the wave and the position where you have received the wave whether there is any crack or not. So that is how the magnetostrictive delay line sensor is used. I would like to put a few interesting questions for you. For example, you which I have not discussed in the course. Let us say piezoelectric material we know that there is both direct and reverse effect which means you can use a piezoelectric material as an actuator or as a sensor. Now can you use the same piezoelectric material both as sensor as well as actuator? This is what is called a self sensing actuator or a self actuating sensor. So you can uh, try to see that how you can do that. Okay, another question that I have received is that what type of smart material can be used in a soft gripper? Now uh, soft grippers as you know that they need uh, two different type of uh, input. One input is in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the type of you know load or the type of force that the gripper is actually applying on the system. And the other type is that generally the soft grippers are used sometimes for highly brittle materials. So uh, what is the slipping rate at which the material is actually falling down? Now these two cases uh, for both the cases piezoelectric material is one of the ideal material because it can be used uh, by the use of D33 and D13 combination. You can actually use it for both the purposes that means you can actually measure how much of force you are applying. Also you can measure that what is the shear strain. Uh, in fact it is not D13 it is D15 that what is the shear uh, strain that it is undergoing. So by using uh, the combination of these two coupling you can actually uh, use it for both the objectives of a soft gripper design. So I was uh, uh, telling you about the self sensing system. So that is one question that you can think of it. The uh, second part of it is that I also told you that smart materials is one step towards intelligent system design. 
Now please think of it that how can you develop an intelligent system with the help of smart materials, which means you have integrable sensors, you have integrable actuators, but you will also need an integrable control system inside the entire structure. How can you do that? Please think of that aspect. Bio-inspired fish movement with piezo actuators is one of the applications. Of course, more common is uh, by using shape memory alloy based actuation system. Uh, that's because you get a larger actuation, but piezo actuators can also be used as a flapping system. And for such cases, uh, what you need to do is that you need to enhance the amplification you know of the displacement and for that as I told you that amplified piezo actuators or APAs you can use in terms of developing it. So uh, the good part will be if you compare between shape memory alloy based uh, fins and let us say piezoelectric based fins is that you can get a much high frequency flapping if you use piezoelectric based uh, fins uh, whereas uh, it, you know you can get large uh, deformations or large angular rotations if you use shape memory alloy based system. 